Amen. Uh, appreciate you, church. Uh, good Amen. evening. Amen. But uh, can you join me and give another, give God another praise for our praise Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor Rod, for Pastor uh, Jeff, all the stuff that y'all do for this ministry and, and all those long-song heroes that work behind the scenes uh, that make this all possible. Uh, definitely, uh, I know it's Wednesday, well, it's like hump day, as we call it. You know, midweek, you know, we probably came here carrying some baggage. I know one of the songs that was mentioned, the, the Leave It at the Altar. You know, sometimes that's challenging, but uh, it kind of seems like when you hear that first tune from those vocals, that it kind of gives us that extra um to kind of just shed that shed that load. So again, I appreciate that but for volunteering to, to make this happen, create this atmosphere day in and day out. Uh, so church, uh, not too long ago, I was part of a, a Bible study group, and one of the things we talked about was this this idea, this this word called emerge, emerge. So to emerge, just. Think about that for a second. You know, what does that mean uh, to you to emerge? So maybe I can get a couple of volunteers. You know, tell us kind of when you think of that word. You know, just in the natural, uh, what does it mean to you? And uh, for those that are online, uh, you too as well. You know, you can comment in the section there and give us your thoughts. But uh, does anybody want to? Sure, kind of what you think when you think of emerge? Yes, sir. I like to say uh, to emerge is to spring forth or to spring up. Okay. To suddenly appear as if out of nothing. But... To spring forth, to spring up, to suddenly appear. Okay, anybody else? Sir, press up. Step up. Yep. Okay, you step up. One more. Okay, Brother Joe. To come forth. To come forth. Okay, good, good. Okay, one more. <laughs> sir? Yes, sir. One more? Uh, hatch. To hatch? Like, come out of your shell. Okay. Roger that. You know, and some of the things that we came up with doing this group, some of which, you know, you guys uh, just mentioned, uh, to become more well-known, more important, to come out, to appear, to become visible, to manifest oneself, uh, to be revealed, to surface. I kind of like this one, to rise from a inferior position, you know, and to evolve, uh, you know. What about spiritually? You know, as, as we look at our spiritual man here, how can you apply, how, how do you think that applied to, to it, to that, our spiritual man, to emerge? Yes, sir. Um, it says in the scripture that a man that loves God will be known. Because he's allowing the spirit man to prosper and it's seen, other people see. Okay. And of course, some people get a little upset because why can't I have that? <laughs> because people don't pay the price. There's a price to be paid. And if we want God to be glorified, we the more we yield to the Holy Spirit, the more of God can be manifested. Roger, we're gonna talk a little bit about that today as well. So, cool. Did Joe leave any, any room for anybody else? <laughs> uh, Ma'am, Miss Taylor, <laughs> Mr. Joe, Richard. Yep. Okay, spiritual gifts. Use them. Anybody else got another hand over here somewhere? Sir, press it. Yeah, we got the attitude. Yeah. You know, all these are important. So that's kind of like also kind of what we we're looking at, emerging, but most of the sense of our spiritual man. And, and, and that there is a journey that, that it goes through that was kind of alluded to there. It don't just happen, do it? Because when we started this race, we started at a point where, uh, you know, it was born into sin, we know that. And we know that sin is not going to make it to the place we want to go, right? So it's going to be some evolution. It's going to be some things that have to happen. Our spiritual man is going to have to emerge from that. Uh, to a point to where it can start dictating our life, right? Uh, so, you know, it's almost about to be like it's got to take its rightful place, you know? You know, so because we know that sometimes we're led by something else, right? Mm -hmm. So that spiritual man, it's going to have to emerge. It's going to have to take that rightful place if we're ever going to make it to where we say we want to go. Amen. 
And I think it's safe to say that we want to make it to this place called heaven, right? Amen. Yes. And as was mentioned, it's going to be some commitment there that's going to be required of us to be able to do the things that we need to do to allow our spiritual man to emerge, to be able to one day hear those words. What are those the words we want to hear? Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done our good and faithful servant. So what about the opposite of emerge? We already, we already gave some definitions of what to emerge kind of mean. What do you think will be the, uh, what will happen in reverse if that don't happen? To the hide. The hide. To disappear. You know? This is all. You know? Is this also symptoms of our spiritual man? Yes. You know, did we, you know, we had a term, did you lose your first love? Did at once we was on fire and all of a sudden, you know, our, man, our spiritual man started breaking through the, the, the shackles of his life? But then life happens, I guess. Situations happen, and we may lean to the wrong thing. And now we start finding ourselves doing what? That spiritual man regressing, and dissolving, uh, disappearing. So what are we going to do about that? You know? We can't. We got to repent. And again, those, some of those things is kind of what's going to come up a little bit later. But I know I'm kind of talking to the choir, but you think this is applicable to us? You, how we arrived? Nope. You know, does anybody here think that, hey, my spiritual man is on point? It, it, it came from uh, the hopes of the pit from which it was dug to where it is now, and, and there's really nothing else, that, uh, no maintenance that, that, that needs to happen? You know? So this is, so this is a never-ending thing, right? So we never get to the point that we can say we have arrived. Yeah, we never get to the point where we can say that there's nothing else I can achieve, accomplish, and do better than I do now for God, right? So there's, there's always going to be some work that, that needs to happen. Uh, so yes, though we might have been running this race, I look across this room, and we probably got maybe a thousand years worth of ministry if we had it all up, you know, yeah. here, right here. But still, you know, it's applicable to us, just like it is to the newest person who walked through these doors. Amen. We got to keep doing those things that's going to cause our spiritual man to thrive, to grow. And that's an environment. I think, Pastor, you mentioned we take our spiritual man once or wherever we go. But one of the pastors mentioned that in the yeah. service not too long ago. And sometimes we can put it in a situation that could kind of hinder or stop that growth, right? Yeah. Or we can take it to places that uh, it's going to thrive. Again, these are the decisions that uh, we have to make. Now, our spiritual man, uh, we, we kind of alluded to it already as well. Uh, there is a, a growing period. You know, there, there's going to be a phase where it's, you know, we come to Christ as babes, right? You know, and then we do what? We start feeding it. And it start going from what? What's the phase? Of it? Going from milk, right? Mm -hmm. Then when it gets to a point, it starts eating what? Meat. 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 Yeah. And once it gets to that point, then we can almost say that, hey, it's kind of where it needs to be. But yet there still be there still need to be some maintenance to keep it there. Otherwise, yeah. the curse of this life. Right. Start choking out those yep. things that was there before, right? Yep. Uh, so we got to constantly be vigilant because we know Satan is that what? That line that's constantly seeking whom he may devour. Right. Trying to find those that maybe are malnourished. You know, there's one rap, rapper that talks about, uh, it's a gospel rapper, and one, one of the songs is called Gotta Get Your Weight Up. Uh, and the whole purpose behind that song was, you know, feeding the spiritual man, keeping it healthy, and not letting it, you know, go dormant. So we just have to be uh, constantly mindful of this. Because if we don't feed our spiritual man, who's going to start running the show? The devil. Yeah. Our fleshly man, right? Yeah. You know, and we know the works of the flesh is what? You know, we can rattle them off. You know, adultery, fornication, all those things are the works of the flesh. All those things are things that we will find ourselves doing if our fleshly man is stronger than our spiritual man. But what happens if you feed your flesh in there? It grows stronger. It keeps getting stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, each and every day. We kind of talked about the evolution process, starting with the meat, the milk, and then eventually uh, getting to the point where it started eating meat. And then what, what's the, I guess, the outward appearance of that spiritual man immersion once it reached that state? You know, we're looking at the fruits of the spirit, right? Right, right. You know, are you going to be able to demonstrate that love, you know, uh, 
and all those things, that patience, that meekness that, that we need to, to be able to display in our life if our spiritual man is not strong? No. Our spiritual man is going to have to be strong for that to happen. And I know Pastor Todd probably like this. I think he even mentioned it before. And y'all kind of already know where I'm going as soon as I mention his name. You know, sports. Uh, Michael Jordan. We, we all probably heard of him before, right? He's a pretty good basketball player. Some people say he's the the greatest that ever played. But there was a point in his life where he was just another kid on the playground. You know, he, 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 had, he had that in him, but it wasn't visible. He was just another kid on the playground. And then later on, I'm sure someone said, oh, this kid, he, he's a little different, maybe a little special. Then I'm sure a little later on, someone probably said, oh, he might be something one day. I think a little later on, someone probably said, okay, he's probably the best I've seen around here. A little later, someone probably said, he's probably going to wind up in the top 50 or something. Then, you know, he's, he no longer played the game now, but now he's, he's considered by, by most to be the best that's ever played. But it started at one point, and then it got to the, the, to the end. How did it get there? Did it get there just by chance? No, it got there because, one, he had a desire, he had a vision, he had a goal, right? And then he, he fed that vision, he fed that goal, he practiced, he studied the game. He studied those that went before him, you know, and those that even played with him. And you think he ever lost? Yeah. yeah he lost. Yeah. Think he ever got beat, fell short? Yeah. yeah. But did that stop him? No, because he, he learned from those mistakes. He used those mistakes as fuel to get better. That means he went to the gym even more, practiced even more, studied even more to get to the point to where he, as some as we'll say, would be called the greatest. You know, our journey is not much different. You know, first we gotta decide too, right? One day we, we gotta say, we gotta get tired of this life to the point where we say we want something else. And once we come to the conclusion that heaven is what we want, and we make that decision, then guess what? You know, people will say that about us. Have you ever been somewhere where someone said, there's something different about you. You're not, you know, you go back home, for those in the military, you go back home years later after you've been serving for Christ, do they see something different in you? If they didn't, I guess that'd be another conversation, right? <laughs> but yeah, they should see something different in you. They should see that maturity happen. So just as Michael had to first have a goal and then start doing the things it took to get there, we got to do that. You know, he had to feed that, that drive that he had. That what kept him in the gym. That what kept him studying the game. So how do we feed that drive that we have? I guess first we got to have it, right? right. And then we got to be committed, right? Someone mentioned that. Then we gotta start feeding that drive, start doing things that it take to, to cause that spiritual man to evolve from eat, drinking milk to get to the stage where uh, he is eating meat. You know, and once, and once we start that journey, you know, this is kind of where that speed of spiritual man comes into place. You know, as we start saying that heaven's where I wanna go, what's our roadmap? It's the scriptures, right? right. It's, the, it's the word of God. That's the manual that we go to, right? Uh, and then soon we'll start realizing that, you know, Christ is the door that we got to go through. You know, we got to start looking at, start counting the cost. Uh, soon we'll realize that, you know, we got to be born again. We got to we gotta become a new creature. You know, this is the evolution process that, that's happening. As we feed that spiritual man, we start getting understanding. We start getting knowledge. Then just as Michael did, he, he didn't just practice. He didn't just study. He started practicing what he studied. You know. You know, in, in, in the gym by itself, and then in the game. So we have to do that as well. Once we come to the knowledge of the truth, and once we understand that Christ is all in all, and that when He's He's there, He will never leave us or forsake us. He gives us a tool that we need to move forward. We have to we have to grab all that and apply it to our life, and then start going out and doing the things that He wants us to do, and relying on those things that He just taught us. Right. Amen. Uh, Two, we we'll realize that. Uh, there's a job that God wants us to do, right? Yeah. And Pastor Lee's talked about that not too long ago, right? That we have to be fishers of men, right? Amen. You know? That's just, that just encompasses all of what God wants us to do. You know, yeah, we let our light shine. Yeah, we do all these things. But it all should culminate in our ability to be able to be fishers of men. Amen. Because it's going to take that to be successful, right? So, yes, we will come to that understanding as we continue to grow and learn of God. And, again, feeding our spiritual man. Uh, 
And you know, through this whole process, again, you know, we probably gonna miss a meal. You know, we're gonna make mistakes. But again, if we're determined, we'll we'll see that. And when someone mentioned it, it may be a brother that shows us that hey, we're losing weight, spiritual weight. Yeah. And we, we, we need to pick it back up. Yeah. You know, it may be a sister, or it may be, you know, somebody in passing that shows us that, you know, maybe we're not doing what we need to do. We say we want to be the greatest of all time in basketball, but you don't go to the gym. So, so uh, well, we at the point where we will receive that. We will if we determine to get to where we say we want to go. You know, if we allow our fleshly man to, to guide our life, you know, we're not going to wind up where we want to end. We, we, we're going to miss the mark. It's going to take us allowing our spiritual man to get to his rightful place. You know, and the, and the closer we go to God, the stronger we become. Somebody mentioned that. And Pastor Tamako uh, kind of talked about it the other day. You know, who, who do we say God is, right? Uh, uh, what, what does God mean to us? Well, as we grow in Christ, as our spiritual man gets stronger and stronger, we'll be able to answer those questions. Because they can be able to look at our life. Our life will be that, that living epistle. I think that was kind of talked to a little bit earlier, too. People will see kind of what we do or what we don't do or what we say or what we don't say because they're, they're, they're in will bear the marks of Christ in our life by the example that we set, by the things that we do. And that will only be the case if our spiritual man is strong, right? Because again, we already talked about the works of the flesh. Uh, now, you notice I probably didn't mention any scriptures doing this, doing this topic. You know, yeah, that, that's kind of your homework. To, to, to study, to show that stuff approved, you know, to validate or to discount, you know. That ball is now in your court, you know. So we say we want to go to heaven. We know our spiritual man has to get strong. So what are we going to do? I guess that, that may be one of the last questions I ask. What are you doing? What, 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 what am I doing? What are we doing, you know? Or what are we not doing? You know, so we all got to self-evaluate. Uh, and just, just, you know, determine, you know, is this what God, we hear that little phrase, what would Jesus do? You know, if, if our spiritual man was strong in our life, that, that, that would come up all the time. But how many times do we go through life and that question never make it to the surface? You know, we rely on our own understanding. Uh, again, our, our fleshly man. So, family, uh, the balls in our court. You know, I just want to kind of share with you that this is something that, that I have to look in this mirror. Really, I'm talking to myself, just speaking aloud. Uh, I got to make sure that I'm resolved in, in my destination. I got to make sure I'm resolved in, in doing what it takes to get there. Putting in the work, you know, hanging out in the gym. You know, it's a lot of places we probably can hang out, you know. I know sometimes when pastor come up and it's on Wednesday, we look out and, and, and we like, okay, maybe they're home watching, maybe sick, maybe X, Y, Z. Hopefully they're in the gym. You know, hopefully they're working out. Hopefully they're getting good at their craft. Their craft as being, you know, 100 sold out to Christ, wherever they're at, right? And the same thing applies to me, so I got to ask myself that question as well. You know, where I'm at today, tomorrow, the next day. Am I willing to put in the work uh, to feed that spiritual man? Because it's not just going to happen. Nope. So church, I just want to encourage you that, you know, God tells us that we seek, we'll find. Right. You know, if, if there are answers uh, that we're looking for, if we study the scriptures, you know, God will make them known to us. Uh, or God will reveal it through a prophecy, or you reveal it through a dream, or reveal it through someone preaching Sunday morning, Wednesday, or whenever, right? Amen. But the question is, are we seeking? Amen. I think Pastor Eunice mentioned the other day, like, first we gotta follow, you know? And if we're not willing to do that, then uh, we gotta know what happened. But just as Michael studied those that was before him and doing him, we gotta do the same. We got the scriptures, we, we, we got the history of this ministry, and we got that you know, thousand years of experiences that's sitting next to us every day.
So, yes, I didn't really share any scriptures. That's your homework. So you may say, well, where do I start? Well, you see the person standing in front of you or behind you or on the side of you? Start there. Ask them. Ask them what are they doing to feed their spiritual man. You see, that starts the conversation. Yeah. You know? And then from there, you know, that's how we grow. And, and you think about it, you know, we talk about fellowship. And, you know, in this case, I'm talking about godly fellowship. What typically takes place when you have godly fellowship? Speak about the things of God. Does that iron sharpen that iron? Yes. yes. Yeah. You think that's feeding that spiritual man? Yes. yes. So if you want to make it to heaven, you know your spiritual man got to be strong. Is fellowship something you should be seeking out? Yes. So, so I'll just end with that. Amen.